Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's a girl, Jackie Ina. Keeping it cute because we don't want no nip slips. Jacket, 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 jacket. Jacket, 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 jacket. Earlier this year, I did a video, products that y'all let flop, and it did really well. I think it started a conversation about products that maybe we forgot about, maybe we might have slept on. So I figured, why not do like an end of the year round two? I mean, there's been so much that's launched since the beginning of the year when I first did that video about nine months ago to where we are now. Just quick disclaimer, when I say products y'all let flop, it doesn't necessarily mean like you have to run out, like please, do not feel like I'm the influencer that's buying into the over consume. Like you don't have to buy everything that we talk about. It's not necessarily products that y'all let flop, even though some of them are. Anyway, it's all in good fun. And it's just me talking about the products that I really like that I feel like deserved a little bit more shine, but it's all in good fun. It's not that deep. You don't have to be offended that you can't buy every single product that I mentioned in this video. There's no guilt here. I promise you it's all fun. Now I know we have to address the obvious. I get it. There are so many products that come out at once and it can be overwhelming to keep up with but some of these products that I'm gonna talk about you can actually get your money's worth I'm definitely not the girl that feels like I have to have every single launch I have it because it's my, my job and, and they send it so I don't use it but I swear to you I don't crave it I'm not like itching for it to like hit my inbox because I already know that there's so many things like okay this is something that I'll get a lot of use out of this is something that I get a lot of use out of this is ashy it's going in the trash so in today's video I'm gonna be showing you how I got this completed makeup look using some of the products that we'll be talking about. Oh, but real quick though, make sure you join the Jack Anna family. Now I know the notifications can be quite controversial. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. It really just depends on if YouTube is on her period or not. I don't know. Try, I'm tired of arguing with the algorithm, okay? What you waiting for? Let's go ahead and get started. Wee, 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 wee. First, I'm gonna start off with my Milk Hydro Grip Blur Primer. This is definitely not a product that flopped in 2019. This primer is doing very well. It's actually one of my favorite primers to launch this year. I definitely don't consider the pure four in one love your selfie foundation a flop. This is by no means a product that was shy of YouTube reviews this year. But I'll definitely say I feel like people talked about it and then it went away. This foundation launched with 100 shades this year. I do think 100 shades is a lot. What ends up happening is now, are we just racing to beat a number? I don't think that that was the case with Pure because I know the person who worked for this company who is a black woman and who has literally been really trying to get the company to push for better inclusive shades, better non ashy shades. That was her way of being like, finally, they're listening to me. Now I'm going extra hard. Like, I feel like at that point she was proving a point. So I don't think that was Pure's way of trying to like one up other brands at all. I think they always had it in them to do that. But unfortunately from a marketing standpoint, people looked at it as like, oh, you're just now just doing 100 shades to one up everybody else. And like, I don't think that's what they were trying to do at all. And I feel like after the initial shock of the fact that it came out in 100 shades, it was like, no one talked about it. But this is actually, I would probably say one of my favorite foundations to launch this year. Aside from the one that Shiseido, let me go grab it. I told you I'm fast. Now this is the Shiseido Synchro Skin Self-Refreshing. Too Faced Born This Way and Pat McGrath had a baby. Feel like it'd be this one, the Synchro Skin. Now this foundation launch was pretty huge for Shiseido because they don't have brown shades at all. It is an Asian brand and you already know what time it is with most Asian brands. These are probably my two, one of my two favorite foundations that launched this year, but just really didn't get talked about. Like I said, after the whole shades hype died down of Pure, it was like the girls forgot about her. And I was like, well, wait a minute. We just gonna forget that Pure gave us the four in one goodness that is love your, nah, 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 nah. I'm not gonna forget, y'all Y'all can forget, but I'm not. I'm gonna set my foundation with some setting spray before I blend it out, what I always do to get my foundation to last longer. What I love about this foundation is how blurred the skin looks. I love how matte it is, but my skin also breathes and it has a really healthy amount of golden and olive shades, as well as red shades, neutral shades. There was a lot of complexion to launch this year. Some of them, not as authentic as other launches, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like I'm a pretty good judge of character when a brand is being pretty authentic or hopping on a bandwagon. Either way, we still have more stuff to choose from. It is full coverage and this actually applies as a concealer. So as you can see, you twist off the lid, it has a doe foot applicator and it also has a pump. I thought that was pretty cool. I personally prefer the doe foot because I can just place the foundation exactly where I want it and then I can blend it out. And it does act really nicely as a concealer as well, I must say. As far as formulation, goes I feel like this is pretty good for nighttime because it is so full coverage and it is so glamorous and blurring that 
I just prefer to wear this going out, but you can wear it during the day, you can shear it down. Now the next product I wanna talk about is concealers and one of which does actually get a little bit more love and hype on the tube. A couple more reviews actually exist. I learned about the Infallible Full Wear Concealer by way of Nabella Noor here on YouTube. Fellow brown girl and who I absolutely adore by the way. She told me about this concealer. I tried it out for myself and have been absolutely obsessed since then. And I have seen a couple people review this and basically kind of hail this as like the next big thing in drugstore, which I would definitely say this is it. Pause real quick. I don't know if anybody's noticed this, but CoverGirl has like kind of like rebranded and no one's talking about it at all. Like at all. Personally for me, I'm not gonna lie. I wasn't really here for it. Like ever since CoverGirl got rid of the Queen collection, which is the best thing since Brown Girl Drugstore Revolutionary transformative products to ever hit drugstore shelves. I don't know if you guys remember the Queen collection. It was like Queen Latifah was the face of it. It was like a subcategory of the CoverGirl brand that had darker complexion products. And I feel like that was going really well or maybe it wasn't going well, I don't know. But I feel like ever since they got rid of that, no one's really been checking for CoverGirl and I get it for the big drugstore brands, it is hard to keep up. So lately CoverGirl has kind of like been rebranding. They tried to like move away from like the easy breezy. If you work with them, they're like, don't even mention that anymore, which is fine. But you know, with rebranding, I think you have to really have a deep insight level at like what the people really want. I saw the new products that they came out with and personally, I just wasn't really here for it. But then I actually tried them and I was just like, ha! Whoa. Girl. Whoa, whoa! What, what? Hold on! Wait! No one's talking about this! They came out with this True Blend Undercover Concealer. I saw very little reviews on this concealer. If there were reviews, they were from a lot of smaller channels, not to say smaller channels, are not valuable at all. You all are influential and valuable in your own right. But I haven't really seen a lot of people collectively in the beauty community talking about this new concealer. I wanted to talk about both of them because I feel like even though the L'Oreal Infallible gets a little bit more love, the CoverGirl one is virtually like untalked about completely. One thing that I have noticed though is these shades run either really gold golden or really neutral, which might I add, there are a lot of shades in this concealer, definitely way more than the L'Oreal one. Golden shades in the drugstore, also olive shades in the drugstore are almost un heard of. I'm gonna use L'Oreal Infallible Wear. Infallible Wear. So I'm gonna take L'Oreal Infallible Wear Coco as a color corrector on my face. It was really hard finding a shade in the CoverGirl concealer that was like red enough that I can correct with. So I figured, you know, I would just take this as an opportunity to use both of them since I like both of them. If I had to compare formula wise, I would say the L'Oreal one is a more hydrating version of Shape Tape. Not as dry is shape tape, not as matte. And of course, the applicator, I mean, to ignore the applicator is like ignoring the obvious. Like it's very clear, very clear to me what kind of customer they were trying to market, just the way that they package the product. The big conglomerates now, back in the day, they used to own everything. It was like a secret exclusive club of these brands that were basically owned by all these old white dudes who didn't even know nothing about makeup. And they kind of had the whole makeup thing on lock. Now, all these indie brands are popping up and they have a direct relationship with people like me, people like you guys, the consumers, the influencers, the trendsetters, the conglomerates are like, let's go to get a sip of water. You know, they're shook. I'm just saying though, like CoverGirl, anytime you wanna come back with the Queen collection, you can call me because, uh -huh, talk about gold. Actually, I really think it'd be really cool to be like the face of something like that, to do what Queen Latifah did for like a drugstore brand. We haven't really seen any other drugstore brand replicate that same magic because they don't even try. Maybelline, you know where to find me, girl. You know what time it is. If you wanna come out with a Queen collection subdivision subcategory, call me, girl. Power of manifestation. This is definitely the foundation that looks better the longer you wear it. This is just elite level matte. It is just so beautiful. This is a banger, y'all need to stop sleeping. I love these strobe lights from Milani. They remind me a lot of the one from ABH. They're probably the exact same thing, but they are liquid highlighter glows. You guys know I love liquid and cream highlighters and I've been using them quite a lot. The color that I use, by the way, is number four, glowing. Before we finish concealer, I'm just gonna throw this on. Cause I actually meant to do this underneath my foundation, but it's okay. This is gonna add a really pretty natural glow. Maybe it's just the people that I'm watching, I don't know. No 
No one talks about these. I don't know, maybe it's like a cream thing. Creams are still very scary for people. Liquids are still very scary for people as far as like color goes. Please don't be scared. This is going to give you the most natural glow. And don't ever say that I never put y'all on because Milani's definitely on the budget friendly side. For real, for real, like stop sleeping because do you see how pretty this is? Just take like a round brush like this, apply in very small sections. You honestly can't go wrong. If you're really scared, do it on your bare skin first. That way you can put foundation on top of it if you mess it up a little bit. People just haven't really picked up on that cream trend. It's so gorgeous. Now to highlight, I'm gonna switch over to the CoverGirl True Blend Concealers. I'm not that wild about the packaging, but once I actually tried this formula, I was like, wow, this is so different from what I feel like the drugstore offers right now. The two shades that I'm gonna use are Golden Honey and Caramel. I actually really like these colors. And like I said, if you are looking for something that is golden or olivey or neutral, which is very rare for the drugstore, you can definitely find it in this collection. One thing that I will say is some of the shades that are labeled golden actually run a little bit more olive, like golden caramel on me is this bottom shade. That's definitely olive. The names can be a little bit tricky, but luckily if you run by a drugstore and you happen to see these, you can get a better, clearer picture of what they actually look like in person. The coverage on these is definitely on the fuller to flawless side, which is another thing. We don't talk about how there's levels to full coverage. NARS Sheer Glow could be considered full coverage, but I would consider natural radiant long wear flawless coverage because it's like an extra amount of fullness that just kicks it up a notch. There's levels to full and it's not all one size fits and that's okay. This is definitely a full coverage concealer and very matte. Look at that, look at that. Do you see how flawless that is? That gradient right there. That is bomb. I didn't plan for a lot of the finds in this video to be drugstore products. It just, that was just God's plan for me in today's upload. But I'm so glad the girls are finally stepping up. And you know what? They didn't really have a choice because I'm telling y'all who they have to compete with. I mean, we're living in a color pop world. Y'all better step it the hell up. When something dries down too fast and you didn't get to blend it out all the way, you can always rejudge with your spray and that'll like reactivate it. I'm gonna set this with my Derma Blend Pro powder. This has really become a holy grail setting powder for me. Like it's that good. I'm very particular with powders that I use under the eyes. Sometimes the face powders I can get away with a little bit more, but under the eye, it's like a joke. It really is a joke. This is the loose setting powder in the color Warm Saffron. Now they have actually two types of powders. It's the loose setting powder. The other one that they have, I think comes in like a banana shade. I don't like that one. That one is a little bit more textured, a little bit thicker. This powder is so bomb. And this warm saffron color is just the perfect warm honey highlight. All you need is a little bit for both eyes. Make sure you pat that down right before you set and just go in. This is such an awesome formula, it's so good. Then I'm also gonna travel this into my smile line area. I'm just gonna line my nose real quick with that brow. Before we get into brows, I'm gonna bronze real quick using my Ashley Blaine Featherson Bronzer from Minted Cosmetics. I actually really like this bronzer. I like everything from Minted, in fact. Just gonna add some warmth to the skin. This is the first time I've used the shade Season 1. I actually really like this one. I don't know if I would consider this bronzer a flop, but I will say when it comes to Minted, give Minted their flowers because their foundation stick was one of my other favorite launches of this year. I do love a foundation stick. I'm glad that we're finally taking the stigma out of black owned brands because years ago, and this is stuff that y'all don't like to talk about, I don't forget though, I remember. Three years ago when I started talking about black owned brands, it was like, but what about everybody else? Just because it's owned by a black person doesn't mean you can't use it. It just means the black person starts makeup brand. Can you stop please? And I feel like there's still some of that stigma today with brands like Minted and they haven't really gotten the reach that they really deserve. But I do know that this brand is doing really well. I don't know if I'd call this a flop though because I know a lot of chocolate girls do love and use their stuff. I just wanted to mention that, you know, don't be afraid to venture out, try something new. If you the Nigerian owned and Nigerian flavorful beauty brand that just launched an Ulta this year, which I was one of the first people to promote their campaign. <laughs> so Oma Beauty came out this year, made a big splash. They had complexion products, they had shadow palettes, they had lipsticks, they had everything. Recently, they just launched an entire brow collection and I'm not even kidding. The baby hair brow is a dead on dupe for Benefit Precisely My Brow. So if you don't wanna use Benefit for whatever reason, or you don't have a good enough shade, this is the exact same thing. They also have a fro to go which is definitely for the girl who wants a little bit more of a fluffed out brow because it's like a thicker, not as precise pencil. But I use both of them together because I really like using both of them together and they kind 
kind of act like what Gimme Brow and Precisely My Brow did for me. Now I have that in Oma and personally I like these colors a little bit better and I like the packaging. I like the fact that they went with this darker gunmetal. It's really pretty. So what I like to do is I start off with shade five and it has a dual end pencil on one side, brush on the other. I always of course start off with a brush and I just tweezed a chunk out of my brow. Just ignore that. Shade five is the second to darkest shade. So I've recently feel like I need to lighten up on my brows. I like the shape that I do them in, but I feel like the brow pencil colors that I've been choosing have been like a little too harsh for my complexions. I lightened it up and I went with number five and I've been really happy with them lately. Now this pencil is not soft at all. It stays nice and hard. I just really like the way that this brow pencil applies. But this is glass on baby. After I've basically traced the shape of my brow with baby hair, then I'll take Frodigo, the thicker pencil. I use shade three and then I use this to fill in the brow. And then after that's filled into my liking, I finish it off with their new brow gel. This is in the shade, it's called Blow Out. You know, kind of like blow out, you get it? I like that it's all inspired by like 70s disco era, you know, big hair. And that's why we brought Marguerite today. We'll be bringing Marguerite in today's tutorial for today's look. So the shade that I use in Blow Out is shade number five. And I just take a little bit of that just to finish up the brow, set it in place, make sure it looks nice and clean. I love a straight up feathered, like I still like a sculpted brow, but it's almost like a feathered and sculpted at the same time. Side note, speaking of which, if you've tried brow lamination, please let me know what you thought of it because it's basically this thing where they like permanently push your brows up so it's like laminated into place. It sounds really weird, I know. And when you see the pictures, it looks so good. Okay, we're gonna move on to eyes. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that CoverGirl concealer again and pop it onto my lids as eye base. I'm just going to bleedly blend that out. That concealer is so mad that I just feel like that was gonna be a flop. So I grabbed my ABH eye primer and I'm just gonna put that on top of that. And you know I don't like using this primer by itself because it's very caucus. So I like mixing it in with like a brown concealer shade. Now this next palette, in addition to mine of course, by no means a flop as in it's just not doing well. I'm sure this palette is doing quite phenomenally. Nobody really gave the Safari palette from Colored Rain the press she rightfully deserved. This was like, like such a well executed and put together eyeshadow palette. Look at the material. First of all, the packaging, very fitting for the color choices when you open up the palette. I'm not even checking for the outside. The outside is just the bonus. What's inside is just one of the most perfectly selected color combos. And it's also so different from like what we have out there. Like in a world of neutrals and basics and nudes and pinks, which I love. So have a seat. We got some Safari palette this spring and honestly the quality was incredible as usual colored rain eyeshadow palettes are always bomb remember how obsessed I was with the Queen of Hearts palette like that was my 2016 just oh I love that palette so much I'm not gonna lie the power palette gave us some bangers too look at the material you know who wore the hell out of this palette? Donnie Darkowitz on Twitter and Instagram created so many exceptional looks with this palette right here. I don't know what it is about this palette on brown skin, but it's just, no, I can't, I can't cut the camera then. I'm gonna dot a little bit of translucent powder along my eye because we probably will have fallout. I'm not gonna lie, this is a very pigmented brand of shadows. I'm gonna start with the Congo Basin, this mossy matte green shade here on the side. Blend Congo Basin along my crease area. Sometimes this matte mossy green can be scary, but once you put this actually on your eyes, you can see it is a dream to blend out and also to apply. Look at the non-patchiness of it all and I haven't even finished blending. Look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it! Change this to 4K now. You can just feel the quality in Colored Rain Shadows. They're definitely up there with like ABH for me and Pat McGrath as far as like favorite formula. Next I'm gonna move on to Matriarch, which hey, excuse me, this dark purpley sort of gray, sort of purple, matte color here, and start working her along her outer crease area. Start off small though, because I'm telling y'all the pigment is serious. You don't want this color to get real ashy and real intense too 
soon. Now, as we start to build that color in more and more, I want you to start moving it inward more and more because I want this look to be a little bit more dark than bright and is overly vibrant than the first tutorial I did using this palette. And you guys, even though I know I didn't really post about this palette as much, I used it a lot off camera and it's also a really good palette that works well with other palettes like Miss Power. So this is pretty much doing exactly what I wanted to do. And that's the thing that I love about their shadows is they do what you want them to do. And living color. Adding a little bit more Congo base and again, just to make sure that grain doesn't get lost. I'm trying to do something that's opposite of what we did last time. The last time I did a look with this palette, I used a lot of Green Valley. So it was pretty, pretty much a green look. We're gonna use Lioness and Amazon Basin. This is very controversial because it's literally gold and silver. Cause you know, there is such thing as like cool golds, like champagne. It's almost like if champagne, oh, that pigment, oh my God. God. Oh, I love the chunky texture of this one. This is so beautiful. So what I was saying was, what was I even saying? And does it matter? This just has my full complete attention right now. What I was trying to say is basically, I'm gonna try to create the illusion that we have a gold in our lid that has a silver undertone, but like you don't even have to wet the brush. The pigment is just downright disrespectful at this point. This is just Lioness on its own. We're gonna now pop into Amazon Basin. Amazon Basin is really sparkly, which I love. It's got lots of little glitter specks in it. Sometimes if you feel like your eye shape is getting kind of lost, what you can do is just tilt your head back and that'll really show you where the eye curves. That'll help you find your crease and then you can apply your shadow with your head tilted back. Going back to a little bit of Congo Basin again, just to freshen up around the edges of where we applied that color. Now for my bottom lash line, I'm gonna take an eyeliner color that's almost identical to our good friend, Ms. Jungle, which is this turquoise, matte turquoise down here. This is from Urban Decay, the 24-7 glide on pencils in the shade Junkie. Terrible names, I'm so sorry. And I'm gonna take Junkie and pop that along my bottom lash line. Sorry, not bottom lash line, more like my water line. Ooh. Then we're gonna go to Jungle with a blending brush. Gotta find, just gotta find one. Start to pop that along our bottom lash line for your neighborhood friendly pop of teal. We definitely need an inner corner highlight and I don't want nothing too vibrant. So I think I'm gonna go with Amazon Basin, the silvery color we used earlier and pop a little bit of her front and center. I didn't even put that much on, like just enough to just open up the eyes. Now we're done with the eyes and we're gonna get rid of all this fallout. Go away, get out of here, scream. During the commercial break, I threw on So Extra Miami Lash from Lily Lash. And I just wanna say in general, don't you feel like we live in a falsies world and like mascaras in general, like no one really talks about anymore. This is the Pat McGrath mascara, by the way. This didn't come out in 2019. This came out last year, the end of 2018. It actually really is a really good mascara for bare lashes and for falsies. This is a big lash. I ain't mad at it though. Now, I definitely don't expect that everybody is gonna have Natasha Denona coins. Please don't think this is what I'm trying to insinuate or say here, but I do know that people do generally talk about her brand and they speak pretty highly of her brand. So I was quite surprised to see that people didn't really talk about the Bloom Blush and Glow palette. I feel like people are just so enamored by her eyeshadows that they just don't really pay attention to anything else. No one really talks about her complexion stuff, but also I'm not a big fan of like the shade ranges. They usually run a little too neutral for my complexion, so nothing's ever really stood out to me. But her face palettes, she always gives something for dark skin girls, always. And I always find them really flattering. I mean, you have these two top shades, which I guarantee you if this was in any other palette, it'd be way lighter. And this really rich berry color, when have you ever seen a color that dark in a blush palette? You probably have it. I like how she plays around with different textures. There's creams in here. There are pressed powders. Natasha is just upper echelon top tier girl. She's quality. If you have been considering investing in Ms. Denona's products, I'm gonna say this was actually one of my favorites from this year. It's a really beautiful face palette. So I'm gonna take a bit of the dark cream blush on Nabella's e.l.f. brush from her collab and I'm going to fluff. Oh, this is pigment, sis. I'm gonna add a little bit of that on my cheeks. I don't wanna get too carried away because cream, sometimes when you put it on top of, you know, your already set base, you don't wanna take any of the product off. So just work in sections, little bits at a time. This would also be really beautiful on bare skin. I can tell the texture of this. I've never tried it, but it definitely is giving me bare skin, bare skinnable. My nose is running because it's a fake winter here in California. No, it's actually really cold. I'm tired of people coming here and being like, you're gonna get cold in California. Come to California without your jacket and see what you're gonna say. 
See what you're gonna say. And don't ask me to lend you one either, I'm not. And to add just a little bit of dewy glow to the skin, I wanna go a little bit more cool toned with the highlighter, so I'm gonna take this glow extreme. I don't know about extreme, but okay, fine. You know what, I'm actually gonna just mix both of these. Add a little bit of that right where it needs to be done. This is such a good multi-purpose for brush. So pretty, so natural, so subtle. Even though I'm not gonna lie, I've been over highlighter lately, this really is a gorgeous palette and a really pretty formula too. Don't forget about my mold, child. And I wanted to finish off this look with a product that's not really stepped on. Fenty Matte Wizzles definitely got all the hype. All throughout 2017, I mean, this is a product that gets very good reviews and it's just an amazing product. I mean, the lipsticks are bomb. The color payoff, exceptional, phenomenal, indubitable. Single is one of my favorite color. No, this is, this is not the color I wanted. Sorry, I meant to grab single. That was Pumpkin Rose. Pumpkin Rose is really cute though. Single is one of the newer colors that Fenty launched. Wait, no, no, it's not. I meant to grab Pumpkin Rose. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. Pumpkin Rose is one of the newer colors that Fenty launched last year. They expanded the shades of the Mademoiselles. This formula is incredible. Like it's just <sighs> undefeated. I'm gonna go in no liner and just apply it straight to my lips. Because this orange is so muted and kind of close to my skin tone, I actually like the way that it looks with no liner. It's editorial. I was gonna add a gloss, but I feel like the moment I add a gloss, it's just gonna change, okay, I'm gonna add a gloss. This is the Fenty Gloss Bomb in Confetti. I love the way silver, no, just kidding, Never mind. That's not the gloss bomb that I wanted to grab, but you know what? This one is still cute. This just came out in the little holiday minis. I don't remember, why don't I remember Confetti? Confetti must be a brand new shade. Then she also has Cheeky, but Cheeky's like really fiery, and I feel like we kind of have like a cool thing going up here. Let's just leave it as is. Not everyday gloss. Okay, and that is the final look. Are we feeling the big Diana Ross hair? Oh yes, I'm definitely taking advantage of this for a couple Mo uploads because his vintage touch. He did my hair for Halloween and I've been pulling this wig out of the archive since then. It's a wig so you can literally just take her off, preserve the style, put her right back on the holster. Just subscribe, join the Jack Hanna family anyway because like why not? You know I'm lit, you know you are gonna keep coming back anyway. And also hit that bell notification so that you never miss new uploads. Now since you here you know you better watch the next video. Watch it, what you waiting for.